listening to another episode of the Business of Aesthetics podcast series brought to you by our gold sponsor, AMP. AMP innovates your aesthetic practice. We also want to thank our silver sponsors, Eilise Works and Pronox. Naren Alru Raja and Jeffrey Richmond founded the Business of Aesthetics community in 2019 to help practice owners find fulfillment and success. Jeff and Naren have worked together for 12 years helping practices grow. Over to you. Hello and welcome to another Business of Aesthetics podcast show. Today we have a really interesting subject. A lot of our community members are interested. Everyone knows we need to rank when we come up uh, in searches and, and those types of things. But how do, we, how do we rank higher than someone else? You know, how do we come up higher than someone else? What, what kinds of things um, uh, can we be doing in our practice so that we're getting chose, um, uh, chosen more by patients than other practices? Well, Narin, Aru Raja and I have been working on this for decades. And uh, Naren is joining us again today. He is definitely uh, uh, um, the most knowledgeable person I know regarding digital marketing, digital media, and and things to do. So we've asked Naren to compile uh, eight things you can do online to get more people to choose your practice, to get more patients to choose your practice. So Naren, thanks for joining us today. Thank you, Jeff. Yeah, this is an awesome topic, and I'm really looking forward to going through those eight points. Let's uh, let's hop in. I know uh, really quickly, just for the, the few people that may not know who, who you are, you, you're also the CEO of uh, Equa Marketing. In, in addition to being a co-founder of Business of Aesthetics with me, um, Equa Marketing has done digital marketing across specialties for a couple of decades. But give a, a quick background on yourself. Yes, I'm a serial entrepreneur. I like uh, creating businesses. And uh, the main business I run is called Equa Marketing. It is a digital marketing agency okay. that focuses on helping uh, private practices get phone calls. So we are an end-to-end digital marketing agency. What that means is we start by building a website, then we optimize it so you get uh, ranked on Google organically. Uh, so you are, like in, in the case of uh, Thrive, you are being seen more than 100,000 times for a few thousand keywords. Um, And when you are seen that many times, then the points we're gonna talk about today, things you can do to get more more patients to choose you comes into play. Then we do those things. Uh, And then when we do those things, then you get phone calls. Like you get close to 600 phone calls a month. Uh, Typically 20% of those are new patient calls. So around 120 new patient calls. So that's kind of what we do. We do end-to-end digital marketing that makes the phone ring. Well, let's, Let's jump in here, but I want to just, you made a really a good point there, which is this isn't so much getting your website seen. This is once your website is being seen, how, how to, what kinds of things can I do so that people trust me or like me or whatever it is that makes them want to pick up the phone and make an appointment with us? Absolutely, Jeff. You said it perfectly. Yes. Because, you know, when, when Google shows you, they're not just showing you, they're showing you and 10 other people, right? So just being seen or somebody going to your website is not good enough. They still have choices. Now, something is happening in their subconscious mind, where after considering all their choices, they're choosing you, and they're calling you, and they're booking an appointment with you. And then, of course, coming in for the appointment and then of course accepting treatment so that's all about helping them choose you again and again so they become lifelong clients who love you and tell all their friends about you well go ahead and give us number one what's 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 the first thing that uh we can do to get more patients to to choose our practice yeah this is very powerful it's it's a uh, having pictures of happy clients for example, you can ask, you can have an iPad. We have an app on an iPad where the uh, the iPad sign might say, I love my doctor or, you know, I am acne free. Different, different fun signs depending on the type of practice you are. Just fun signs. Uh, and then you, you let the patient hold that iPad sign and you or somebody in your office stands next to the patient and you take pictures. Why do we do this? Uh, when we studied the, the age of the doctor, owner, and the practice patients, typically it's plus or minus 10 years. Typically it's same gender. So if you want to go outside of 
your age group and outside of your gender, you want to show them someone like them likes you. How do we do that? We take pictures of all kinds of people. So we create a kind of an Excel spreadsheet that says, I want to have 20 to 30 year old female. And under female, there could be Caucasian, African American, Asian, Indian, etc. And then you can specify how many pictures you want in that category. And then for each one of those, you get a picture. So uh, uh, you make it like a project for your team and you. And anytime someone is happy and they fit that profile, you say, hey, do you mind if you take a picture together? And they're like, absolutely. You take a picture, you have a page on your website called happy clients or happy patients. And then you put that. Of course, you need to get their consent so that in case sometimes later in, the, later in a date, they want to have that picture taken down, you can take it down. But as long as you just you know, make sure you do it properly, you can accumulate, we find around 80 pictures, that's all you need to show them that pretty much there is someone like them who loves you. When they so, see that someone like them who loves you, they are assuming they're going to love you. So Naren, do you, in this case, am I looking for lots of pictures for targeted demographic based on who I think um, I want to see in my practice, or I'm looking for lots of different pictures to show that everyone's welcome in my practice, that there's people like you here in this practice. Yeah, most of our clients will say, I want, as all demographics or most demographics, they might have a few exceptions, like I want, I don't want to take care of children as much. So of course, in that case, don't show pictures of children if that's not your, uh, that's something that you're purposefully not trying to grow. But outside of those exceptions, most clients, what they do is they want to show that they get all kinds of people coming to them, different skin colors, uh, different uh, age groups, male, female, some even want to show families coming to them, because they right. want that family, you know, coming to the dermatologist as a family and then stay. But, with the but on my on my testosterone replacement page, let's say, or a bioidentical hormone replacement page, that's where I may want that, you know, 50, 60, 70 salt and pepper type person. Uh, on those pages, whereas on a Botox page, maybe I have more 30 year olds or 30, 40s and 50s year old. Absolutely. That's one way to use it. And also you may want to have just one page for the entire site called happy patients. And that could have literally like, think of it like a portfolio, like, like, you know, all your pictures. So that could have right. like 80 pictures of all kinds of people and human beings, like I'm sure you know this, let's say you buy a certain car, you buy, I don't know, uh, Mercedes, uh, I don't know, uh, Series 3, right? You're going to see that car everywhere you go because your mind starts looking for it. Same way, like, you know, when we see 80 pictures, our eyes will literally look for someone who looks like us. So the minute we see that person who looks like us on that happy patients page, our assumption is, yeah, he should be able to help me because he has helped two other people like me. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. If we don't have that picture, then the assumption is, well, he is 30 years older than me. Maybe he won't understand me. You make up all these reasons why not to go to that doctor. Or he's a male and I'm a female or vice versa. You know, they, they come up with all kinds of reasons why that person may not be a good fit. You're overcoming that with this happy patient strategy. And I like uh, from uh, it looks just to see lots of happy people say, hey, this is a happy place. If you're going to come here, you'll be happy. It's like when we do a, a great event online, we may uh, post pictures of that event afterwards to say to all the people that didn't come, look how much fun we had at this event. Or when you come to these events, they're going to be fun events. Absolutely, Jeff. Absolutely. Um so let's get on with the, uh, uh, some more. I know uh, we're going to try to buzz through these today, and then we can expand on any one of them further if people have specific questions. But let's let's keep going. So number, uh, the, a number, another thing that you can do to get more patients to choose your practice. Yeah, the second one I would like to highlight is um, personal pictures of the doctor. So, for example, if you are a dad or a mom have pictures with your family, you know, you, your spouse, your kids. The reason is many people who make healthcare decisions are moms. So when that mom sees some other mom or dad, they feel like they like you because they're similar to you. I'm sure you've heard of US elections. They talk about the beer test, right? Do you think you can have beer with this 
man or woman who's running for president? And if you, the answer is yes, you're more likely to vote for that person because you feel like you can connect with that person. We tend to like people who we can connect with. We have something in common with. Now, start with that personal picture, but also maybe you might have hobbies. You might like traveling. So have a section or page where you put up pictures of all the places you go. So if there are other travelers, they feel like they like you because you are like them. Could be cooking, could be baking, could be hiking, whatever it is. You can also do this with your team. So you are also helping the, the patients before they even show up, kind of connect and have that kind of liking towards you or your team. So this is a very powerful strategy. And the reason I'm really big on this is after the homepage, the number one page that's visited is the doctor page. So people are checking you out. They want uh, to know who uh, you are. About about us page about us page so right. when they go there you know your qualifications your professional pictures are great but if they feel like they can connect with you if they feel like you are like them they're going to they're going to be more likely to choose you you know narin it's uh, i almost want to do a whole podcast on this but it's it's an interesting subject because 10 or 15 years ago i think there was some professionalism on these pages that we were trying to show and now what you're talking about is really just the human element. It's like we brought humanity back to the web pages. Um, and when I used to do business in the South, it was always like if you sat down and you started and you said, hey, uh, here's, here's what I'm doing, you know, or here's what I have to offer. That was never the right way to start. The right way to start is here's who I am. Here's me. And then if you want to do business with me, then we can talk about what it is that I have to offer. And it so it, it harkens back to those times for me a little bit. Yeah, absolutely. And it's, it's um, you are 100% right. Um, what, what's, um, we, we do business with people we like. I mean, if I tell you, Jeff, there are two companies, one guy you cannot stand, the other one you like hanging out with, who are you going to choose? You know, you know what I mean? So sure. the, the, the more you get them to like you, and that's kind of by showing, like you said, bringing that humanity back. Not I'm this big person on a pedestal, you know, you need to bow down to me. That I, I'm, I'm going to be open with that person who's on a pedestal. I'm going to be right. open with the person who I feel like I can, you know, who understands me and who, and, who and, I can understand. And a lot of time, uh, somebody that a patient really connects with, with in an office is a receptionist or is a esthetician. And um, so I love that idea of posting stuff for them too. I just recently coming back from the aesthetic show in Las Vegas, um, took a bunch of Ubers. And you know, when the Uber pops up, it shows you their name and what they drive, but it also now shows a little this or that about them. And if you have the impetus to do so, you can get in and say, hey, your family's from, you know, Africa. I've always wanted to visit there. Or I saw you're a father of three boys. I have boys or whatever it is. So I, once again, great, great point. It's, um, it's funny how some of these simple things go so unseen. Um, these common sense things, we, we don't think about it. Okay. Yeah, absolutely. But I know, the Uber example is perfect. That's exactly what we want. You want the patient to feel like, you know, they like you and they wanted to talk to you, you know, about who you are as a person. So speaking of uh, common sense, and I'm cheating because I'm looking uh, ahead at your notes a little bit, but uh, I know, go ahead and share your third one. This is one that I don't think will surprise anyone. Yes. Um, third one, we all are doing it. It's no longer like a kind of nice to have. It's a must have. It's Google reviews. The, the key points I want to make here is today, 90, 95% of healthcare decisions are taken after reading Google reviews. So it's no longer like, it's nice to do it. You must do it if you want to thrive in today's market. So what do I mean by that? Number one, you want to be the number one provider in your area. Let's say you are a plastic surgeon. Ideally, you should be the one with the most number of four and five star Google reviews in your area. Um, you know, if you're a dermatologist, same thing. If you're a med spa, same thing. Try to aspire towards that. Number two, you don't want this to be like, you know, I got 100 reviews, now I'm going to just coast. I'm not going to care about this. This is something you have to care about, like brushing your teeth day in and day out, month in and month out. So I would say at the very minimum, set a goal of getting 10 additional Google reviews every month. 
Some practices I know do 20, 30, and just keep at it, keep at it. Make it part of your practice. Every time there's somebody happy, we have a tool called Grow My Reviews. You use that tool to send them a text and they write a wonderful love letter review. And the reason you want to take advantage of the moment they're happy is in that moment, they are much more likely to write what we call love letter or paragraph reviews. Those reviews are golden because now they have keywords in them. And when Google algorithms start you know, deciding who to show for what, when they see the keyword Botox, you're gonna show up because somebody mentioned Botox in that review. Or when they talk about, you know, bedside manner, if the person is searching for, you know, those types of keywords, you're gonna show up because somebody talked about how easy the doctor is to, you know, uh, work with. Uh, so yeah, get, be the number one in your town in terms of most number of reviews. Try to get at least 10 up more reviews a month and try to encourage those love letter reviews. So this is something I'm reinforcing. It's not a new idea. Most people know it, but it's just something that's so important. Well, I think the idea of making it as habitual as brushing your teeth and making it that important may be new for some people. Let's, so when we say try to get, let's help people a little bit. Um, how are, you know, one of the ways that I, I always suggest to people was your reception, whoever is first and last to interact with your people, um, says how does your point how did your appointment go today or something there's almost always something said and it's not that hard to find the people that are really in happy really excited or really in love with their provider and it's in that moment that we need to identify those people and get them to to do a review um do we hand them a link do we send them an email what what do you suggest and they're yeah. to do that so in terms of tips, uh, one tip is, I know you are a big proponent of the morning meeting, Jeff. What do you call the morning meeting? The morning the, the, the crunch. Morning, morning crunch. crunch. So some practices, what they do is, even at the morning crunch, they decide who they're going to ask. They know who's happy. They know, and usually you want them in a positive mindset. So how do you get them in a positive mindset? Either ask a question about something you did where the answer is, oh, thank you so much, right? Or talk about something they love. Let's say, this lady is coming in, she loves her garden. Start talking to her about gardening, she's gonna be in cloud nine. And then if you ask her for anything, there's much more chance she's gonna comply with you because she's mm -hmm. happy. Or some people, it's their kids in university. Some people, it's the trip they're gonna take or they just took. So figure out how to get them to that happy, you know, appreciative state. And then you say something like, hey, can I ask you for a tiny favor? Absolutely. Um, you know, we love taking care of you. Do you mind if I send you a quick text or if I give you this card, whatever your choice is, if you have a text text or a card, can you take two minutes to write a review for us? Um, and um, so that's something I would recommend. The other thing is do it early in the appointment. If you do it when they're leaving, uh, the chances of them actually following through might be less because when they leave, now you are no longer the hero or you know, heroine of their moment. Now their next appointment, their next concern is what they're thinking about. So they will have good intentions and they'll say, I'll do it, but they'll forget it. They will, something else will come up and something else will come up. So key is ask 15 minutes before they're going to leave. Um, so those are some of the tips. And then uh, maybe create a reward. Some people even have a champion. They'll say, you are my Google champion. Some people say, okay, if as a practice we hit this target, everybody gets a $50 gift certificate, everybody in the practice, or these four people who are gonna be part of this goal. Uh, so make it fun, like like Jeff pointed out and I mentioned earlier, it should become like a habit, brushing your teeth. It's something you just keep at it, keep at it, keep at it. Uh, I think in the morning crunch meetings, just mentioning that to our own team so that we're aware of it, but certainly in our weekly and monthly staff meetings to remember it and and maybe even just start accounting for how many new ones we have each month and that way um, we let our teams know that it's something important that we're going to be looking at it each month and now there's accountability to it as well absolutely i think the key is uh, you know tracking it appreciating people when you get a review hey Joanne, guys, great job. I noticed you got this amazing review. This patient goes like spends, you know, like writes five sentences or two paragraphs saying how awesome we are and all because of you. So you can appreciate them. And the more you appreciate people, the more they will do this, especially nice. your team. It's really nice. Great, great point. So next, uh, uh, in regards to uh, 
instant satisfaction. Go ahead with point number four. Yeah, I mean, over the last two to three years, uh, maybe even four to five years, um, artificial intelligence has become bigger and bigger. And this concept of bots, uh, and I'm specifically talking about chatbots, has you know has grown. In, in a nutshell, it is a mathematics game. Like two percent of the people who are going to your website won't call you or text you or fill out a form, but will engage with a chatbot. What is a chatbot? Chatbot is something that shows up on your website or your Facebook page and just jumps at you and say, hey, how can I help you? So you, you have this face or this, you know, waving hand, you know, that says, how can I help you? And people are curious, and even though they're not ready to call or text or fill out a form, they would click on that link. As soon as that link is clicked on, of course, there are so many solutions out there. The one we developed, the way it works is, um, it's, it says, hey, how can I help you? And it gives them some choices. I have a question, I want to book an appointment, etc. So it takes them through a workflow and then finally it gets their name, email and cell phone and it sends that to the office. So think of it this way. All of a sudden, if you're getting 400 people to your website, 2% of 400 is eight people. That's eight extra leads a month that you otherwise would not have received that's just coming into your office in the form of email leads. The key here is, um, you know, you want the workflow to be set up correctly. So you are, you know, asking the right question, collecting the right information. So of course you need to work with the company that's setting it up to make sure it's customized. Second who, who is- Who is that normally, Naren? Who, who, is that my digital marketing company? Is that a third party vendor? Who, who is that? Yeah, I think, we as a digital marketing company offer that as part of our service so we don't charge extra for it but there are third-party companies that just do that as a standalone thing and then of course you pay them uh, a subscription fee for that service is that but do i need to go to my web host first or the people yeah host yeah maintaining my website that that's go, my phone. yeah absolutely go to your host maybe they already have a standard you know very powerful chat tool that they have that they offer to their clients at no extra charge. Like in our case, we don't charge extra, it's included, but absolutely, that's where I would start. Uh, and the numbers do work, right? Eight times 12 is 96 extra clients. And the other key thing is, when you get that lead, call them back quickly. If you call them back three days later, they won't even remember who you are. People today, they just move on. They don't, what, they don't remember quickly? things. Uh, within an hour or two would be nice if it's working hours. Yeah. Of course, if it's after hours, the next business day, you know, first thing in the morning would be nice. Uh, but if it's during working hours, like within 30 minutes to an hour would be amazing. Yeah, I agree with you. I think more than two hours is too much. So two hours or less if it's within um, working hours. And you have to see too, these people haven't emailed you. They haven't left a phone message they're using some type of instant form of communication. They're showing you how they want to communicate. Absolutely. Let's keep moving. This is all good, such good information. I don't want to miss any. So uh, uh, another tip uh, for us to get more patients to choose our practice. Yeah, call reviews and call training. This is so important. You could spend thousands, you know, some practices tens of thousands of dollars on marketing, and maybe that marketing is working wonderfully for you. You are getting a lot of calls, but if you are not converting those calls into booked appointments, you are taking $100 notes or, you know, $1,000 checks and burning them. Because, you know, you and I know this, Jeff, because we, you know, you, you, you coach clients and you have helped you know, many, 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 many practices grow their business. And one of the areas you look at first is how they are handling the phone call. And some practices, you know, unfortunately, uh, you know, health, you know, doctor, derms, plastics, even med spas, lose 70, 80% of their new calls, meaning they don't book them into appointments. Uh, so there's a huge opportunity when you start recording the calls, when you start listening to the calls, and of course, based on that listening, you start training your people, training the people on, you know, mindset, training the people on how to answer certain questions, tra you know, tracking the metrics, uh, and of course, improving it. So like Starbucks, the reason Starbucks is one of the best companies today, one of the, I would say, top three reasons, is they have a secret shopper program. So they send thousands of people out to different Starbucks every single day, and those people write detailed reports of that employee and how that employee interacted with them. Uh, and that's that happening thousands of times every day. And that's why Starbucks is Starbucks. 
Same thing here, but you don't use secret shoppers, you use call reviews and recordings and training to do pretty much the same thing. I, we've done a podcast before on the telephone answering and telephone consultation. It's a subject that I think is so important that it, it demands that. I would just add um, to your point that in addition to uh, reviewing calls and tracking calls and, and listening to what employees are saying and all that stuff, there's a huge number. When you do this, when you take the time to do it, you will notice there are a huge number of unanswered calls too. For whatever reason, there are a much larger number of unanswered calls than you think. And those two are missed opportunities. So I, a great point. Big, big, very, very true, Jeff. I mean, the calls that we looked at for you know mutual clients, yeah, there are a lot of unanswered calls. And this again is a chronic problem that keeps happening month after month after month. When you add it up, you're like losing 300 patients because calls are not answered. And, and we're seeing it across the board. It's not some, some people are doing better converting phone calls. Some people are doing a better job answering phone calls. And, but all of us can improve in these categories. So there's some are doing better than others, but it's an area that I, I think universally we've seen that every practice has an area uh, to, to improve in this area. Yeah. I personally think this is one of those golden opportunities that that's totally under uh, you know, underserved, if I may, in the aesthetic space. Like this is one of those areas where if, if they get it right, just that this alone will bump up your business by 20, 30%. Just this one piece, you know, forget about all the other things you're talking about today. So the, can... both this and the, the, the chat bot are kind of, you know, um, in regards to being available. So one of the reasons that patients are choosing our practice is because we're available to them. So in that light. Let's continue with our next point. Thank you, Jeff. Um, the next point is um, texting. So the younger generation is more like even my kids, right? I get a faster answer when I text them than when I talk to them or when I, you know, yell across the room. Or when I, even, I was going to say, even call, even call them. Only upstairs? <laughs> yeah, like I could call David, my daughter won't answer the phone. Oh, I could even yell she won't say anything back. But I send a text, I get a reply back. So I think that's generational. There's a lot of people, I would say, you know, for, you know, any, anywhere up to 40, they love text. They just live with it. I mean, you always see them like, they might be in the dinner table, but they're typing stuff away to their friends. You know, like you're in front of them. They're not talking to you, but they're typing stuff for somebody somewhere. You know, so I think that's just, uh, so that's one thing that this generation likes, the younger people, I would say the millennials. The other reason why this is so powerful is, um, you know, life today is uh, multifaceted, multitask. In other words, I might be at a coffee shop having, you know, lunch with uh, my best friend and I see this best friend, um, you know, having uh, skin that looks 10 years younger and I'm like, oh, I need to make that appointment for Botox. Now, I'm not going to interrupt my conversation with my best friend and call that you know, office, but I would send a text, hey, let's, you know, let's book an appointment next week. So I can do that when I'm talking to my friend or even at the office, right? I don't want people knowing that I'm calling, you know, my plastic surgeon or my med spa. So, so I think what we are noticing is it's really simple. It's just enable that text feature on your website. So if somebody's on your mobile, on a mobile device and on a website, there should be a text button. They just click on it, they send text. So that's one side of the equation. That's the in, inbound side of text. Of course, that text comes to you as a lead and then you can either call back or text back however you want to handle it. What I mean by a lead, it's an email lead. The other side of the equation is today, a lot of things, reminders, uh, you know, uh, notifications. Hey, you have an upcoming appointment. Hey, you know, uh, we want you to confirm your appointment next week, you know, whatever it is. All that communication is happening through text and people love it. Even me, like my dental office calls me and they text me. I reply to the text because I might be in the middle of a meeting and I don't want to pick up the phone and interrupt the meeting that I'm on. But it's easy for me to press Y and say, yeah, I'm showing up, you know, uh, to that text. So I, I think text is a very powerful tool. If you want to increase conversions, if you want more people to choose you, you need to be text friendly in every sense of the word. And is that also uh, something I connect with my web host or uh, people that are doing web maintenance on my pages to to should that be available to me already? How do I navigate that? Yeah, I mean, we offer it as part of our service, but I know most companies 
uh, who are marketing companies don't offer it as part of the service, especially this enabling text feature, because you need certain technologies like you need call tracking to be able to be supported. If call tracking is part of the service and it's included, then more than likely getting the text enabled is easy. But if call tracking is not part of the service, then you may need to find a company that will do call tracking and texting for you as a standalone thing. Um, so today it's all virtual, right? It's not like a real phone. It's like a virtual phone that's both tracking the phone as well as dealing with text. Um, so yeah, I mean, um, so that's what I would recommend. I mean, there are resources out there. And you mentioned in our last point, uh, when we talked about call review and call training, you and I did a podcast, perhaps we could add a link, we'll tell the team to add a link to that podcast. So if anyone is curious, they could go ahead and, uh, you know, listen to the link. And by the way, Jeff, I, I, I'm sure you are aware of it our downloads have gone up 200%, you know, recently. So it's amazing. Uh, I think more and more people are listening to our podcast. So uh, I think we are doing something right. <laughs> awesome. Well, we'll continue to share good information and our community will continue to grow. So uh, uh, number, um, number seven, seventh thing that you can do to get more people to come to your practice. Yeah, you want to be seen as an authority and the best way to be seen as an authority is to get other people in healthcare to say you are great. So reviews from other doctors, I think is very powerful. Uh, so we use a tool called Doctor's Choice where other doctors write reviews for you. We convert those into graphics and then you can use it on your social media, have a page that's all reviews from other doctors. Uh, this is really important because if a patient is worried that you know you are right for them or not right for them, when they see a review from another doctor, they are much more likely to choose you because they sure. feel like, you know, you are right for them. Yeah, it's, I mean, it's just the credibility is established almost immediately with um, when, when that happens because now you have third party validation, really. Uh, so that, that makes a lot of sense to, to me. So if I don't have a tool like uh, uh, Grow My uh, Doctor's Choice Awards, um, how would I do that? Yeah, by the way, Doctor's Choice Awards is free, so anybody can use it. You don't have to be a client of Equa to use it. We have 4,000 doctors using it. Just go there, set up a page, send that link to all your friends who are doctors and let them write reviews. And once you have it, it's free. So you just put a link to that page or take the review from that page and use it on your social media or your website. So uh, all of this is, is uh, all of these tips that you've offered us so far are in regards to getting results. So for our, our final tip, um, why don't you go go through that with us and then we can we can review. Absolutely. The final tip, I would argue, I mean, we probably kept the best for last. Again, this is an old time tip. It's not a new tip. Uh, it's before and after pictures and cases. Uh, before and after pictures, meaning if I go to the Botox page and uh, you, this particular doctor uses Botox for three different you know, uh, conditions or purposes, you could have pictures all organized. Uh, so you could have an individual you know, uh, one-stop photo gallery, plus you could take the relevant pictures and put it on the relevant pages. So on the Botox page, you will have Botox before and after. On the Restylane page, you might have Restylane before and after. Some doctors even go a step further and, and show like a kind of a mini case. They kind of talk about, especially plastic surgeons, this is where the patient came in, this is what they wanted, this is what we did, here is where we started, here is where we ended up. So they kind of write a small story, a write-up, like a case presentation. But of course, in a way that um, the average person can understand. So before and after pictures, uh, picture gallery, uh, cases, these are again the eighth and the final tip when it comes to um, you know helping more patients choose your practice, the and I would just go one step further and say if you can get before and after pictures of patients that represent the demographics that you're most pulling from, that it's back to circle back to our our first thing, which is um, those are happy clients. But we're not we're not just showing happy clients; we're showing clients that have received terrific outcomes or terrific results, and of course they'll be happy too. I mean, geez, if we were really lucky, we would get that before and after picture and then we would get another picture of them hugging us or with a board that says, I love my patients or whatever it is. Um, and we would have that same patient multiple times. Absolutely, Jeff. Naren, thank you so much. So eight things that we can do to get more 
patience to choose our practice. Uh, we can take more pictures with our happy clients and share those and show people. We can take um, our personal pictures. We thought that used to be taboo is now really encouraged to, to show our human side, show our interests and allow people the opportunity to connect with us other than just for the uh, reason that they're coming to see us, but connect with us on a human level. Google reviews becoming a part of our everyday life, like uh, uh, brushing our teeth that we're gonna get, continue to get Google reviews. Turn the chat bot uh, button on or call our uh, web people or look for a new marketing company or a third company that can help us with um, those features. We're, we're going to uh, start listening to our phone calls and looking at staff training and conversion, specifically understanding how many calls that we're missing. Um, give patients the opportunity to text with us as an additional way to communicate. We will send outgoing to them, but allow incoming also. Um, go to uh, Doctors' Choice Awards and get colleague or peer reviews about the website. And then lastly, load up my site with before and after pictures, get as many before and afters. Even if I organize before and afters from outside of my own sources, but specific to the procedures I'm offering to really get in those brag books um, put together. Naren, as always, I think uh, every time that uh, we, we host you, which is funny as you're a host also, but um, it's, it's great because we get to hear from your professional experience rather than you asking people about their others. And it's so detailed and important to what we do on a everyday basis that our community appreciates it, it very much. So if you love uh, uh, this podcast, please go ahead and um, do a review for us. Um, if if uh, uh, share it with your friends, get involved in our communities, get involved in the Facebook community and our LinkedIn groups, they're, they're getting more and more active. Uh, thank you all much and have a, a terrific day. Thank you for joining us this week on the Business of Aesthetics podcast series brought to you by our gold sponsor, Aesthetic Management Partners. AMP innovates your aesthetic practice. And silver sponsors, Eilis Works and Pronox. Would you like to join our growing group of aesthetic industry experts and get featured on the Business of Aesthetics podcast? Or do you know someone who would love to share their strategies for growth in the aesthetic business, providing quality patient care or their clinical expertise? Head on over to businessofaesthetics.org forward slash speakers and apply to be featured as a guest on the show. Remember to subscribe to this podcast on iTunes, Google Play, Amazon Music, or wherever you listen. If you would like to engage with today's or any of our past speakers, Join our Facebook group or LinkedIn group by searching for Business of Aesthetics. Thank you and have a great day.